How's it going YouTube? Kels Prime here and in this video I wanted to have a discussion about the recent bannings or should I say cullings of players that have been exploiting the game in a PvE focused game. Yes I know it's a PvE focused game right? So what's the big deal? So multiple YouTubers who I won't name are out there right now cause it's hot topic and being business as usual means it's easy views to completely and utterly condemn EA and Bioware for this action. You know exactly who I'm talking about. They are actively slamming Bioware and EA for the banning of streamers for something the code allowed them to do. And this is really important to what I'm going to get to. So do keep in mind when I say the code allowed them to do. This is sadly something Bungie and recently Ubi Massive have instilled in players that it's okay to do. However, more so Bungie. Clutch, a notorious Bungie cheater, exploiter, DDoSer was allowed to continue his tyranny without a single care by Bungie. In fact, it took Bungie almost 5 years to finally ban him. Absolutely crazy considering the amount of evidence that was brought to the forums and in fact the people that were actually bringing the evidence were the ones getting banned. Yes, this is an actual real statement here. If you brought evidence that people were cheating and exploiting and using external methods to gain an advantage and you had video evidence of this and proved it in a forum post, you would be banned from the forum, not the person being accused. This is a fact. If anyone tells you otherwise, they are lying. The Omnigol glitch, chest exploit at the recent Fnatic Nightfall boss encounter were all exploits that gave those capable of doing it an unfair advantage, especially as this was a game with PvP, yet Bungie did nothing. In fact, their silence only promoted exploitation as more jumped on the bandwagon of such things. On the subject of Glad, he to this day exploits Destiny with the Titan skipping and more. Sure, Bungie are fixing it finally after 4 years, but this exploit was used in world first clears which should have been disqualified, but it wasn't. The Prime Engram glitch exploit was used in first world clears and should have been disqualified, but it wasn't. Those that got the world first all exploited the Prime Engram glitch. How was this remotely fair to the rest of the community that played fairly and did their part not to exploit? It's not. Just that the community, and Glad, and everyone else became so used to the fact that streamers and YouTubers could not be touched that they genuinely believed they were untouchable. That is until EA came along anyway. They believed that because they had a big audience they could do, say, anything because their free PR gave them immunity and to be truthful, Banji's luck of balls here meant that they did. With the basis of this in place, I can finally explain my view on this matter. I want to start by saying Glad, Streamerhouse and others were not banned in my opinion for the free play chests. They were banned, however, on two fronts. The exploitation of the Stronghold Tyrant Mine boss re The exploitation of the Stronghold Tyrant Mine boss reset exploit and for the simple fact that they were publicly showing off the exploit and abusing it to a wide audience and promoting it. This second part is increasingly important because as a streamer and YouTuber, big or small, you have a responsibility to your audience to do the right thing. For many, good or bad, you're a role model and as such, you need to portray that. It's just part of the business and part of what you sign up for. Sadly, people don't see it this way anymore. Now, focusing on Glad here because he decided to go public with this, if he recorded a video of the exploit, published it and then submitted a bug report to Bioware and stopped doing it, then I am in full agreement that he should not be banned. But if he continued to do it after reporting it, it's 100% his fault. Now, did he report this? Didn't he? I don't know. But he knew it was wrong and continued doing this anyway, then in his video he defended why he had the right to do this. Short of saying, Bungie give me free reigns, so EA should too. Again, Bungie here being the base model and promoters of exploiting. Is this the image Bungie really want? But sadly it's the image that they're portraying and the image that people see them under. If you look under reddit right now, everyone is showing Bungie as the be all and end all developer that handles this really well. What's actually happening is that Bungie turns a blind eye and says okay guys you exploited, it's all fair game, good luck be on your way, with zero punishment and that is not how it should be. It is clearly unintended behaviour that is reproduced in a very specific way, that gives you access to loot you otherwise would not have been able to get in such a short frame of time or manner for that point. This is not some farm chests in free play because it has good drop chance, which I think everyone will agree is not a bannable offence, but this is exploiting the checkpoint exit and rejoin system that Anthem has in place for the sole purpose of cheating and gaining loot they would otherwise not get. 
Just because you can exploit this doesn't mean you should, and that definitely doesn't mean you should stream the exploit for everyone to see and abuse. You have a responsibility to not do this. This is not the loot cave where mobs spawned, you killed them and more spawned. While it was odd behaviour, all you did was kill things and they dropped loot for you to go and collect. Not some kill the boss, hurry up and quit in less than 10 seconds, then have the leader rejoin first. Maybe this is why Bioware in the first place made it 2 seconds instead of 10 because they saw the foresight of people doing this and wanted to stop it. I'm not sure. Not some kill the boss and hurry up and quit in less than 10 seconds, then have the leader rejoin first, then everyone else rejoins to kill the boss and rinse and repeat. There's a huge difference. Omni Gold and Crota's disconnect glitch comes to mind here, and had EA been in charge then, I can only imagine the mass bannings that would have taken place, and this level of precedence set by Bungie would not have been in place right now, and players will have been a lot more cautious and conscious over their actions, especially on what they stream and publish to the internet. I am reading on Reddit, it's a PvE game, no prestige for something like World's First, so how do exploits negatively affect anyone? It's completely meaningless to ban someone for this, how is what he did wrong? The answer to this is probably related to guilds and leaderboards that are coming. If these players are 3 months ahead of what they should be, it's totally unfair on the people that are playing fairly. If the rewards are respectful of factors like time to complete and such, then this will affect others. So despite being a PvE game, there are multiple ways that this affects players. But this one comment on Reddit I think is closer to the truth with the exception that I do believe they do care as long as it doesn't break the economy, and I'll get to the economy part in a minute. It says, I don't think the dev cares about exploits, but promoting them via stream is a big no-no in most cases. This I think holds truth in a lot of cases, the chests really isn't a big deal, the stronghold exploiting however is, the storm exploit is, and promoting this on streams is just plain stupid no matter which way you look at it. People are citing that the way Bungie handled players exploiting the raid chest without doing the raid and not being punished is what a good game developer looks like. Are you, are you insane? I say, I mean, really? I mean at this point why don't developers just introduce a god mode and then the moment people activate this god mode they go into an instance filled with players using the god mode because at this point in time I don't even think these people want to play games anymore. Seriously, they just don't. So to the people that are saying this is what a good developer looks like, I say to these people Bungie is the cancer of the gaming industry, and I say this with a heavy heart. When it comes to turning a blind eye, they are the masters at this, and I mean they are the kings at turning a fucking blind eye. The amount of shit they allow to pass through without any goddamn consequence and their constant turning and looking the other way is the reason people exploit like there is no tomorrow. From what I heard, and it's only word of mouth by the way, so I can only go by that, and I have no proof of this. So I'm repeating this again. I have no proof of this. So please don't vilify me and start commenting in my chat saying that where is your proof? I am openly saying this. I have no proof. This is only from inside sources that I've been told this, right? And I'm not going to reveal who told me. So don't bother asking. EA did warn these streamers. And a warning was also placed in the Anthem Discord, but people ignored it. My stance is, you knowingly exploit and you get punished. The Bungie way of doing things is the wrong model. Their World First was a complete joke, rigged with exploits and cheats. Leviathan World First was done by exploiting the Wardcliffe coil ammo glitch. There was so much controversy over this, and you know what Bungie's response was? Well fuck you all, as long as it brings us publicity, who the fuck cares? And that is pretty much the standard that from what I'm understanding in Reddit especially, the community wants to go by. Well, to you guys, I will say this. If this is the type of company you want, and cheaters are your thing, and you want to play with exploits, then fine, Bungie is ready to take you in. If you want to play a fair game, run by a company who takes no shit, then stay. People have gotten way too complacent and expectant that this behaviour is okay, and it's not. And as such, I'm okay with EA banning people for exploiting, especially with the new leaderboards coming. However, I'll give these people a lifeline. I think EA should give them the option to return to level 30 with basic purple gear and lose everything else that was attained. 
I see this as a perfect and fair punishment if people are willing to exploit this. I do genuinely believe EA should put this offer on the table and give it to them because at the very least a prior warning should have been given in my honest opinion. However, having read the terms and conditions, which yes, I did go and read it yesterday, it does state that they do not have to give you any prior warning to banning you. I think this is pretty bad and I think a warning should be given at the very least. That's my opinion. Exploiting a game, however, should never be acceptable, and as such, Bungie, who people are referring to as a good developer, but in fact is the growing cancer in the industry when it comes to allowing exploits to pass, in actual fact has a lot to learn from EA, and not the other way around, when it comes to taking no shit and taking a hard line against cheaters and exploiters. Now, on the subject of the economy, the player base is the economy. If I play and exploit and get everything in two weeks, we have the same situation as Destiny 2 had at launch. No players cause no content. But this was only possible due to exploits in getting loot and as such the game didn't even run its course before hitting this point, which in turn led to a bunch of people saying there isn't enough loot in the game, when this in fact wasn't true. For launch, it was enough, but the exploits screwed the economy and the player base as a whole, so yes, it did affect the economy, regardless of how you look at it. I will say this before I finish. Glad, in my honest opinion, it's not being truthful, and this is my opinion only. He knows fully well what he did, and what he did was wrong. He also knows why he was banned, but is playing innocent. The sooner people realise this, the better. Now, I'm not saying Glad is crap at what he does. He's a really good streamer, he's a really good entertainer, and the level of effort he puts in to even get 2-3 seconds faster per raid run, speed run, or anything of this kind is astronomical. The amount of effort that he put to solve the Niobe puzzle was crazy. The guy was up for what, 20-30 hours? It's insane. So in terms of level of support, that guy full on, he's the real deal. But in this occasion, he is wrong. And playing innocent is only playing against him, and that's my personal opinion. Well, that's all I have to say on this matter. Whether you agree with me or not, that's entirely up to you, but I thank you for watching. Leave your comments below and let me know what you think. Do you agree with me, disagree with me? Are there certain aspects you agree with me on? Certain aspects you don't disagree with me on? Do you believe they should be banned, not banned? Do you think that they should be given a Hail Mary and reintroduced at level 30 with all purple gear and everything else removed? Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts, your feelings, and how you view this whole thing was handled. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. Remain magic.